For as long as I can remember, big-headed ants, otherwise known as fidole, have been my favourite species of ant, not just observing them in the wild, but also keeping them as pets. In fact, I've kept fidole on and off since 2017, so this video will be quite a throwback to the original ant invasion days. So, no more stuffing around, let's check out my brand new fidole colony. It all started roughly one or two months ago, when I caught a fidole queen. I was out with my friends when I spotted her roaming around on the footpath. It quickly turned into one of those situations where you've forgotten to bring a container to capture the ant, so you're frantically searching around for anything you can finally catch her with. Eventually my friend Sam suggested we check in his car. Luckily, to our surprise, we found an empty chewing gum container similar to one of these. It wasn't perfect, however we had to work with what we had. I took her home and created a test tube setup for her. For those of you who don't know, the basic premise of a test tube setup is to simulate the small founding chamber the queen would normally dig in the dirt after mating. The one side with water soaks through, providing the queen with both water and humidity, and the entrance, also blocked by cotton wool, keeps the queen inside while providing a constant fresh flow of air. Weeks went by and before I knew it, the queen had raised her first generation of worker ants, known as ninitics. Ninitics are generally small compared to later generations of worker ants, as the only sustenance the larvae were provided with were from the queen's reserves that she left her original nest with. Therefore, this species would be classified as a claustral species, as the queen solely relies on her own fat and protein reserves to feed her brood before the first workers take over and forage for food for later generations. In contrast, semi-claustral species such as bull ants don't have the fat and protein reserves required for their brood to develop into worker ants. Instead, they must forage for food to sustain their young. Anyway, back to my brand new Fidole colony. As you can tell by the fairly dirty test tube, this colony has been fed rather well ever since workers emerged. But let's take a closer look at the queen herself. Surrounded by roughly 25 workers, she has very much taken up the position of the queen in the nest, seen by the constant cleaning and protection provided to her by her young. In return, this queen has been pumping out eggs every single day, which are taken care of by her workers. While filming the colony, I noticed something awesome. If you pay close attention, you'll be able to notice the different sized workers. Most of the regular, smaller sized workers are hanging around the brood pile and queen, while the slightly bigger workers are constantly roaming around the nest. It seems that the smaller workers generally act as nurses, tending to the brood and cleaning the queen, while the bigger workers are a rank above and seem to somewhat keep the smaller workers in order. In this specific clip, watch how much more aggressive the bigger worker is to the smaller cast. This is one of the reasons I love Fidole so much, as they have so much character between the different casts in the colony. Speaking of casts, the colony is still waiting for major workers to emerge. This is where Fidole get their name Big Headed Ants. This is because the major workers have huge, muscular heads, perfect for chopping up tough exoskeletons or seeds. Here you can see a worker carrying a major pupae, the last stage before the brood develops into a worker ant. However, due to the major's smaller size, it has led me to believe that there could be a possibility of the colony producing super majors, which would dwarf all other casts. A prime example of big-headed ants producing super majors is within the species Fidole antipodum, which from what I've seen is probably one of the coolest species to ever exist. However, we can only stay hopeful for now. I decided to offer the colony some honey, but first I had to remove the old spider's leg that I fed them recently. Because this colony is so small, I just dipped the tip of a blunt syringe into some honey before dabbing it onto the side of the test tube. To avoid mold, I would recommend placing any honey or food onto a minuscule sheet of paper or aluminium, as no residue is left behind when removing old food. However, this colony is in need of a new test tube anyway, so I couldn't be bothered. For some reason the ants didn't actually go that crazy over the honey, only some workers here and there actually started to devour the sugary goodness. Maybe the colony would prefer some protein rich food, I decided a freshly killed spider would be the go. However, as you can see, the ants weren't too keen on the spider either.
perhaps they couldn't access the juices inside the spider that well. So I crushed it up a little bit further to give them a hand. Yet to my surprise, they still weren't destroying the source of protein. Perhaps their last feed was sufficient. Let me know in the comments section down below why you think the workers weren't hungry. I'd love to hear your thoughts. While filming some time-lapse footage of the colony, I noticed that the queen was acting ever so slightly strange. Was she about to lay an egg for the first time on video? I continued filming her changing the angle to a better shot. However, we must have missed it this time, as she never laid an egg for us to see. As this video comes to an end, I hope you're already as attached to this colony as I am. So in spirit of that, I think we should give this colony a name. Let me know any name suggestions down below, and in the coming weeks, I'll reveal the colony's official name. While making this video, it started raining quite hard, so let's hope that queen ants will be flying tomorrow. And if they do, expect a queen ant catching video sometime soon. With that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll catch you next time. Ant Invasion, out.